Okay, I think we'll go and get started. Uh, still waiting for some folks to come in. I'm going to offer live sessions this week for anyone who wants to redo the first essay, the persuasive essay. So one of the conditions, one of the requirements in order to be eligible to redo the first essay is that you must have completed and received a grade for the third uh, unit essay, the argumentative essay. It's very important that you completed that essay because also a lot of the feedback that you received for the, for unit three, the, the argumentative essay will also apply to the persuasive essay for unit one. Again, we're only going to focus on the first essay, and I'm, I want to give you an opportunity to improve your grade uh, if you feel you want to resubmit the persuasive essay. Now, one of the conditions, the second condition, in, uh, in addition to having completed the argumentative essays, also uh, you need to attend the live sessions Monday through Friday, starting today, Monday, uh, June 22nd. And uh, we're going to have these live sessions every day, Monday through Friday, from 8 to 9. So your attendance for these live sessions will also very much, uh, very much affect your grade. It's very important that we're working very closely together throughout the week as you uh, take a look at your persuasive essay and you're making changes. Now, you can uh, choose to build on what you completed in the first unit. If you want to completely change the topic and start again, you also may do that. If for any reason you are uh, preparing for an extraordinary exam and you just want to receive feedback and information about the writing of essays, because a lot of, again, a lot of the feedback that I'm going to provide you for the persuasive essay will also apply to the argumentative essay. So this will also uh, help those who are also preparing for an extraordinary exam. So you can ask questions and I'll provide you feedback, although you uh, won't be eligible to improve uh, the grade. Okay, so that's in the case of if you are preparing for an extraordinary exam. So what I would like to do, hello, Gloria, good morning. Um, what I want to start off doing is I'm going to go to Teams and what I would like for you to do is to work in the files. If you go under files under our Microsoft Teams space and you go into the folder called Exams Week Persuasive Essay Rework, I have included some Word documents. So, uh, Gloria, I see that you're here. If uh, you wish, I'll go ahead and change one of these files. I'm going to rename it. OK, and you can use this. File if you want to submit and uh, look at uh, if you want me to provide feedback to uh, your essays. Now, if you're again, if you are preparing for an extraordinary exam and you want feedback on two different essays, I will provide you feedback. If you want me to set up another document for, uh, you know, one for the persuasive essay, one for the argumentative essay. Just let me know. Um, but uh, what I want to do is provide you guys opportunities to receive feedback if you want it this week. Uh, again, if you're preparing for the extraordinary exam, much of what we're doing obviously here, I think will better prepare you for the extraordinary exam when you're submitting essays uh, for that. Although I don't have the specifics, um, I'm not sure exactly what's going to be on the extraordinary exam. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you're going to have to submit uh, a couple of essays. OK, so again, I think any feedback and clarification that we can do and work together this week, again, I think we'll we'll put you in a better position for uh, taking that that exam. So let's see, Gloria, I've gone. I went ahead and uh, changed the name to a Word document. If you want to bring over your essay, if you are uh, if you are beginning, you know, from you know, if you're changing your ideas, if you want to completely start over, that's fine also. Um, but uh, go ahead and work with this document and let me know if you want me to create another document. If uh, in the event you are dealing with two different essays. Now, if again, I want to make this clarification. Uh, I want to make this really clear because some of you again are in a position 
of where maybe change a change in the grade in the first essay may mean the difference between passing and, and not passing. So if you're in that situation, I, I want to focus primarily only on the persuasive essay from unit one. All right. If if you are in a position that you know that you're going to be preparing for the extraordinary exam, then uh, again, you may want feedback for more than one essay. All right. So we can we can work in both ways. Uh, Emmanuel, good morning. Um, if you want to go to Microsoft Teams, I will also change one of these documents here. I'm going to rename this, and you can use this file for working uh, this week in your persuasive essay. All right, so please use this document. We'll, uh, this is where I'll also look and give feedback. You can ask questions by leaving comments in the document, as always, and, of course, you can send me uh, chat messages if you have questions. Remember that um, your attendance in these live sessions are going to affect your grade for the essay. It's very important that we're working together each day and that you're making progress each day, that you're asking questions, that I'm clarifying your doubts as you're getting closer to the final draft uh, for this essay that's going to be due this Friday. All right, so I'm going to give give you until the end of the day on Friday of this week uh, to complete and resubmit your persuasive essay. Okay, so again, this is the document where I would like for you to work. And let's see, I have to kind of jump back and forth here to see who's here. If anybody else joins, then I'll go ahead and add them to uh, this word list. But the first thing I would like for you to do is if you have something already that you've completed, go ahead and copy and paste it over to the Word document. The first thing I, I want to talk with you guys with is after you've um, copied and pasted paste over the information to your document, I want to begin talking to you about the thesis statement. And I'll post this in the chat here. We need to talk, think about a thesis statement. And... I would like for us to also talk about the three points that will support your thesis statement. Okay, so the thesis statement again is going to appear at the end of the introduction paragraph. The three points are going to be included in the thesis statement as a list, and those three points are going to also be in each of the three topic sentences in your body paragraphs, All right? So again, if you have already developed an idea, maybe you've started, um, we can work with whatever you have completed, or again, if you're starting over from scratch, then we can also do that. All right, so the first step here is again, go ahead and move information over. Do you guys have any questions at this point um, in terms of what we're going to, or how we're gonna work this week, or uh, what your next step it needs to be. Any questions? Yes. I have a question, teacher. Teacher, can you hear me? All right, so if there are no more questions, then uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. I'm going to be looking into the Word document, and then I'll, I may be popping in asking questions as, as, I, uh, as, I, count, as I see some of your, uh, your work. And again, just jump in, unmute your microphone, and ask questions if you, uh, if you have any questions about what you need to do next or what we're uh, setting out for uh, not only for today, our, goal, our goals for today, but also this week. Our goals for today is to move the any content, any essay that we've already started, bring that over to the document that I just shared with you, and then also uh, identify the thesis statement and the three points. That's going to be our first. Ah, I can't hear you. All right, well, let me check my sound.
Okay, try it now, guys. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Uh, for example, if I wa wanna rewrite the essay that I made, I just move the information that I wrote. So now I can identify again the, this statement, the three points, and I start from that part. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can uh, do okay. that. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. If uh, if anyone is starting from zero and you and then we we need to think about uh, a thesis statement, think about uh, also maybe the problem that you're thinking about developing in the introduction paragraph, or what kind of context that you're you're wanting to talk about. So if you want to talk about uh, just kind of brainstorm and think out loud some of the topics that you're thinking about, now's the time to do that. Is to try to get some feedback and uh, some direction in terms of how you, what you want to talk about and making sure that it's specific enough. One of the biggest challenges in writing a five paragraph essay is choosing a topic and really narrowing it down so that you're not talking too broadly about too many things or that your, uh, your topic sentences are really broad in scope. We want to make sure that they are specific so that when you have evidence sentences, you have examples and statistics and facts that are related to very narrow uh, specific items that are appropriate to talk about in one body paragraph. Okay, so th these are some things we can talk about if you're in this position of starting a new topic and um, you're just not starting to get to, uh, put together a thesis for the first time. Okay, so Emmanuel, in your case, one of the first things I would do, uh, one of the first things I would do is format your your essay. All right, so format your essay. 
What I would like uh, is that you choose Arial font size 11. All right, and make sure that all the text is consistent. Make sure that you're using Arial font size 11 throughout. Um, check your headings, level one heading, the title of your essay and also references needs to be both upper and lower case. Main words are capitalized, centered to the page and in bold. Okay, so let's start first with formatting your text. We want to get it to look right in terms of all the spacing. Having equal spacing, you need to have double spaced text, equal spacing between paragraphs. All right, so I would begin there. All right, just start before we even talk about a thesis statement, before we talk about anything, let's go ahead and format the text. Make sure your paragraphs also have a half inch indentation. Uh, here, Emmanuel, I am showing you the acceptable fonts. This is one of the changes in the seventh edition, which just came out about six months ago. Uh, we have a, a little bit more flexibility in the fonts that we can use. We can't use any font, but we do have <clears throat> different fonts that we can use. And I'm showing here on my screen uh, the acceptable fonts. We, you can use sans serif fonts such as Calibri, font uh, size 11, Arial, size 11. Okay, so again, here just you can look at this list and refer to this and basically choose any of these fonts, but make sure that the size also corresponds to what's listed here. All right, no, notice that Times New Roman is font size 12, whereas Arial is font size 11. Okay, so you can choose one of these and then be consistent. Make sure that you're respecting the same font type and size throughout your entire essay, including references, including the title, and also the reference heading. Okay, so just take a look at these options, and you can choose any of these that are listed here.
Hello, Ana Paula. Um, I don't know if you caught the first part of uh, what we're doing, um, but if you go into Microsoft Teams, let me go ahead and share my screen here. And let's go into files. And if you go into under uh, the folder that's called Exams Week, Persuasive Essay, I'll go ahead and rename one of these folders. This is where you can work. If you have already completed a, an essay for the Persuasive Essay, if you've already have something completed, you can bring it over. If you're starting from scratch, you're starting again, um, that's fine. But uh, this is the file that I would like for you to use uh, for completing uh, this uh, this essay. Okay, so this is where you can contribute, add your essay, and I can also leave comments, and uh, we can work with this document together throughout this week. Remember that one of the requirements for submitting for an improved grade is to also attend these live sessions. Okay, so it's very important that we're working very closely together each day of this week as we uh, as we complete the final draft. Okay, the final draft is going to be due this Friday. I'm going to give you the until the end of the day, all day Friday to complete the essay. But again, this is where we're going to work this week. Okay, so uh, go ahead and begin working there. And uh, one of the first things we need to do, depending on where you're at, I need to look and see what what you have at this point. But we need to be thinking about a thesis statement and the three points that we want to focus on when developing our three body paragraphs. These three points are also going to be stated in the thesis statement. So this is what I would like for us to begin talking about once I, I see what you have so far, once you've brought that over into this document. If you have any questions, uh, just jump in, unmute your microphone, or uh, post a question in the chat. Okay, Emmanuel, um, let's take a look. It looks uh, better already. It looks like you have, uh, looks like it's double spaced. Just make sure that it is uh, double spaced. Let's double check here. All right. Now, try to remove any extra space between your titles and your paragraphs. So notice how that you have more space between the title of your essay and your first paragraph. You want to have only double space, just the same distance that you have between your lines within your, your paragraphs. This is the same space that you should have between your headings as well. So you need to remove the extra space there and remove the extra space between the paragraphs. Okay, so you have uh, equal spacing, like what you have between the second and third paragraph, that's correct, but notice between the first and between the first and second paragraph, you have uh, you have too much space. Your reference. Notice that your references is all uppercase. Never write any text in all uppercase letters. Okay, this is a pretty good rule of thumb when writing an academic essay. Avoid writing any words in all uppercase letters okay so here you want upper and lower case for your reference and also you need to have references on a separate page so you need to insert a page break right before the heading references all right so go ahead and make those changes and then we'll see, look at the next thing Go ahead and remove the extra space between references and your first reference. But uh, you need upper and lower case letters in your title and your heading references. Okay, so always avoid writing words in all uppercase. All right, now 
what I would do is select all of your references, okay, from the very first to the very the last one. Select all your references and go to line spacing and click single space. Okay, so select all of your references. Okay, we want a single space. All right, and then what we want to do is I'm going to, let's see. All right, what we want to do is we want to create what's called a hanging indentation. All right, if you're looking at my screen right now, And if you see my drop down menu, I selected these three points here and where it says special indent and then it says hanging. If you select that, but you have to select all of your references first, select your references and then go to special indent and then hanging. OK, but make sure you select all of your references. That way you just have to do this one time. Notice also you have, well, I'll wait, I'll wait till you finish here. Try to select all of the, the references. Okay, there you I'm not sure, Emmanuel, if you were able to make the change. It looks like the first reference is fine, but the second and third are not uh, they don't have the hanging indent. Make sure that you don't have any spaces. It looks like you have one, two, three spaces between the word the and communicative in your second reference. So you just need one one space, okay? Don't add any spaces. Same way, <clears throat> same way with in your third reference, <clears throat> in between intelligences and based. There should you've got some spaces there, so you need to remove those. There you go. See that? That fixed it. Do the same thing in the third reference. There you go. And the and the last line there for your page numbers. There, okay. All right. Now we're getting closer. All right. Notice single space within each reference, double space between. Notice that you have um, equal space in between references and your first reference. Now reference should be. Let me just make sure here. Yeah. So. I ask you to do a, a page break. Just make sure that the reference is, is the first line of the page. I don't know if it's just me, but it looks like it looks like you have some lines there. So make sure that reference is, at the, is yeah, that's it, is at the very, very top. It's the first line of the page. And so Oh, but make, do you know how to do a pay, an insert page break? If you're looking at my screen, right, put your cursor right before references, just like you have it, and go to insert page break. Insert page break. There you go. That's it. All right, and make sure that you don't have an indentation before reference on the references line. It looks like, I don't know if it's me, it looks like it's a little bit to the right. Make sure that there's no indentation. There you go. I think, yeah, I think that's better. All right. 
All right. This, this is what your references should look like. Now you need to go back and change. Look how you notice that you have Sage open all in uppercase. OK, so it needs to be upper and lowercase. Remember, no words all in upper uppercase. Now, the question here is now when you have references, realize that there is always some text that needs to be italicized. If you have a reference with no italicized text, you know you're missing something, that you need to go back and see what type of reference it is and then find out which text is, is uh, should be italicized. In this case, you're using, uh, you're using articles, journal articles. So what do you think needs to be italicized in each of these three references? Since they're all the same type of reference, which text should be italicized. Yep, except almost, yes, the journal, the name of the journal and the volume number should be in italics, but not the issue number. The issue number is going to be in parentheses. The issue number is optional, right? If you have an, a, 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 an issue number, you should include it, but it's not italicized. All right, so do that for the second and third reference. Looks good, except for the, I think you have the page numbers in italics, all right? It's only the name of the journal and the volume number. That's all that needs to be italicized. Everything else should be normal text. All right, now I noticed that you did not include page numbers in the first reference, so I opened up the article. And correct me if I'm wrong, it looks like this is the article that you're using. So I scroll down here, and although there's no page number on the first page, there is a page number on the second page. So you can include pages one through one through 12. Rarely will you have a reference with no page numbers, okay? so. Make sure that you look carefully and include those page numbers uh, when you're including a, an article. Now, the next issue related to references is what should be capitalized. And I want you to pay close attention now to the title of the article. The title of the article. Compare what you have in the first reference with what you have in the second and third. What do you notice? Mm, okay, so no, actually, Emmanuel, the first reference was correct. You only capitalize the first word. Of course, if it's a, a, com a proper noun, you capitalize it, but only the first word of the title. So your first reference was actually correct. We need to change the second and third, making sure that you only capitalize the first word. Now, in some cases, you have a sub title or a subheading or subtitle with a colon. You don't have an example here, but when you have a colon in the title, the first word after the colon also is capitalized. So keep that in mind if you come across an article with a subtitle. Um, 
Now, the only thing left here I think we need to do, let's see, do we have any DOIs? So let's double check. All right, notice in your first reference you have a DOI. All right, but I don't see a DOI link. So let's look. Let me open up the presentation. I've shared this presentation uh, several times in, uh, in Microsoft Teams. I'll share it with you again here. Uh, if I go into Sway. And let's see, APA Survival, is this it? Let's try that. Okay. No, it's not it. Mm, I don't see it. Weird. Okay, I'll have to look for the uh, the presentation. I don't see it here. That's strange. All right. Um, so when you guys when you have a DOI number, APA publication manual DOI reference. Okay, let's see if we can find some examples here according to the latest 7th edition. All right, here, let's take a look at format of reference list. Look at some examples. All right, so here what, what we're looking for is a DOI or URL, but the seventh edition requires now a, a URL instead of the DOI number. 
And that's what I'm looking for here. You have a DOI, but I'm looking for a, a URL for this for this reference. OK, so if you look here, this is the URL HTTPS. OK, and all I did was I went to Scholar, Google Scholar with your title, and I would do this for each of your three references. Click on here and see if you can find the URL. Again, this is going to be a link. This is going to be the link that you need to include in, in your references. OK, I would include this. When you have a DOI link, a URL, this is what I would include uh, in, in your document. Let's go back to your document. see here. OK, so double check your references for DOI. And when you have a URL, go ahead and include it at the end of your reference. Right here. And since you have two authors in this first, I don't think it's necessary to include a comma after the first initial Z period. You want to include the period, but not the comma since there are only two authors. When you have three authors, like your third, that's fine. You've got you've got the comma there. Yeah, and then I I don't know if, if this is like H A A, if you there are three initials, that's odd to have three. Just double check, make sure that that's correct. And I think everything else looks fine. I would just include the uh, DUI, the URL to the DUI. DOI and make sure I would include that in each of your three references. All right. So uh, for tomorrow, what I'd like to do is uh, I want to talk with each of you again about your thesis statement and your three points that you're going to develop for each of your three body paragraphs. Um, make sure you capitalize the main words of your heading. So make sure you capitalize classrooms. This is the format. When I talk about format, Emmanuel and, and everyone else, this is what I'm referring to. When anytime you do an academic essay, anytime you're asked to write an essay according to APA, this is the format that you need to follow. Indentations, spacing, equal spacing between paragraphs, choosing the appropriate font. OK, um, and, and I showed earlier in the video, uh, Paulina, if you weren't here, Double check and see the list of different fonts. We have you guys have some flexibility in which fonts that you use, but you need to use the specific ones that are accepted and uh, stated in the publication manual. So you got a page break for references, single space within, double space between references, a hanging indentation, check which uh, words or which text is in italics. Check to see which words should be capitalized, which shouldn't be capitalized. All of these things um, need to be taken into consideration when you're trying to write according to APA. All right, so we'll stop there, guys, for today. Any questions about what we're doing uh, today and uh, this week? All right, I guess then if there are no more questions, then we'll um, we'll reconvene tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning. If you guys have any questions, you want me to look at something between these live sessions, feel free to send me a message via chat in Microsoft Teams. Otherwise, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, take care and uh, we'll pick up where we left off uh, tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, teacher.